One of the questions I get asked most is where I got these hoops from. And well, just to go over it again so that people who are new know, this came from a coil of sprung mild steel and it's about eight mil thick and the coil was about 50 meters long. And basically what I did was cut it into the appropriate length to suit my beds and it just remains coiled and I stick it into the ground and there are the hoops. So I got it from Amazon quite a few years back and it's no longer there on Amazon, I notice. So you can probably still get it from a metal supplier, but yeah, 50 meter coil. What I'm gonna do is rationalize how many of these I use on a particular bed, because I've noticed that, well, I was using too many really, and now I've got some need for some more. I'll show you. So I've not had a great deal of success with this blue water pipe. And I know a lot of people do, but I found with the high winds here, it works loose. And I'm sure there's lots of great methods to secure it. But I've chosen to use these hoops over on these beds as well. And I'm thinking that probably two is going to be enough. And I'll show you what I mean. Over here, I've been using four in a lot of cases. One, two, three, four. Four on that one, four on that one. But on this one, managed perfectly well with just three. So I'm going to release one, two, three from there. And I think probably five in there is about right. And that gives me five altogether. And if I can do two there, two there, maybe three there, and then at least two more beds have got a netting over the top of them using a system that I found to be extremely straightforward and very easy to use. So I'm figuring that if I try and secure the net, I don't know, right at the end and I just push these in at a good angle. I'm going to get a decent hoop and I'll be able to support a net fairly straightforward. And same here, I'll leave myself about a foot, I reckon. Just put that one in there. You've got to open these up as you go because they don't want to go in very easy straight away. And I get that one in there. I think this one might need to come forward a bit. And there we go. So by the time I've leveled things out, got my little slope and then I can secure the nets at the end. I think that'll cover it off just nicely. While I've got these nets off, I'm just going to scrape the surface just lightly to remove the weed that I've seen just beginning to sprout. And this is probably a product of the heat not being high enough in the compost, but it really isn't an issue as I've said before. So I'm just going to take a moment just to get rid of these. I don't know what this weed is, but like all weeds, they come in flushes of different varieties. And over these beds, it's all the same weed, just a small two leaf weed at the moment. And I think that will see it gone, which is perfect. Right, I'll just do the others and cover it back over. Job done. So each of those beds now have got just three hoops and it works perfectly well. So that's made really good use of those extras. And if I were to just take one more out of that, I could end up with two hoops on each of these beds. I think that's where I'm gonna end up going. And then once I've got this cleaned up and cleared up, I'll pop some nets over those and we should be good to go. What I do need before I do that is to get my drill over 
to get all these long screws out of this wood. It's pretty rickety, but it is screwed in. At least it looks like it is. Okay, that's my net job done for today anyway. Well, I put a bit of soil on this pathway the other day, off camera, most unlike me, but it just gave me an idea of where things are going to start and finish. And I think this post can probably signify that point. Oh, maybe that's a bit generous, perhaps there. So that I think is where I'll dig the small ditch just to create the edge of the pathway. And therefore that's what I've got left. Not too much. I think I've gone at a bit of an angle here. So I'm just gonna take that edge off so that I've got a nice straight line. And then I know what I've still got to do. And the weed is getting less as I go along, which is a good thing. Just the occasional bit of bindweed, but generally not too bad. Lots of bits of string, but that's not a problem. Right, I'll come back to that a little bit in a while. The rain's really set in now, and I'm certainly not going in the trench it's looking pretty wet and mucky and the whole allotment now is getting a jolly good soaking but the chickens in their rather covered pen are doing okay I'm pleased to say and putting that extra bedding in below is certainly help making sure there's not too much moisture in there let me show you there we are so the girls were, the heads are a bit wet because they tend to peck in amongst the damp and that makes their feathers go a bit, well, mucky, but they're drier than they would normally be this time of year, which is a good thing. And of course the big hens, it's the same really, although they do have an area underneath the coop that they can keep dry. Right, well that means I need to do something that's gonna keep me dry. I've got a good idea. Oh, the benefits of having a polytunnel or a greenhouse. It certainly enables you to keep productive when the weather's, well, less than ideal. I want to show you what happened to the algae on the outside of the polytunnel after I'd given it that spray with the limited supply that I had. Let me show you. So I don't know if you remember, but it was pretty green everywhere. And down here, you can see where it was at its worst and there's still some green there, but everything else has turned this brown color. And um, with just a little bit of movement, it comes off. So the rain will gradually soak that away. I might give it a bit of a helping hand down here a bit later on when I can get out here and stay a bit dry, give it a bit of a wash down. But, Basically, that's removed the worst of the algae and the light can now get in. You can see a bit there, but it's pretty much over in terms of its lifespan, which is a good thing. And I think it was pretty bad around here. And again, it's gone that sort of browny color and it really does come off very easy when it's like that. And even if you just rub it like this and allow the rain to do the hard work for you it does make a big difference there we go so i think next i just need to wait for that algon to arrive and i'll do the inside right the algon has arrived whoopee we get so excited about simple things is it all gone or is it all gone? 
I don't know, is it tomato or tomato? Anyway, this is a path and patio and deck cleaner, but absolutely fantastic for polytunnels, non-toxic, safe for pets, safe around fish ponds, can't beat it. And it's very effective. And it's three parts water to one part of Algon. So this container has got enough to cover up to 60 square meters, huge amounts. So dilute the Algon, three parts water, apply preferably with a garden sprayer, which is what I'm doing, and wet the surface evenly, spreading approximately six meters square per litre. So what I do is fill my pressure spray to six litres and then add two litres of this. And that gives me a huge amount to cover up. And there's two and a half litres in this container. And it says take care near fish ponds. A little overspray or runoff will not harm fish or pond life. But excess wetting or puddling may result in patches of white residue forming. This is harmless and will weather away. Great stuff. Okay, I'm gonna to top up my sprayer. So as I say, I fill this up to the six litre mark and then I can just pour in, no clever measuring because this has got a calibration on the side. Let's get it undone. Right, I'm gonna go up to eight litres. So that should leave half a litre in this. And I bought this in a sort of batch deal where I got four of these. I think on Amazon it was £15 on offer for four. That's fantastic. So if you want to grab an offer, have a look. That's if you're in the UK, of course. Right, just going to tighten this up. This sprayer came from our local to the hardware shop called Wilkinson's and it too is very good indeed and I've had it a couple of years now and of course if you fill it up like this then the amount of pressure you have to put in the top to start with is very little indeed and we should be good to go but before I start spraying I'm going to do a bit of covering up so let me tell you what I'm going to do whoops there we go so I don't really want to take all this out in the rain. So what I am going to do is use these big propagator covers and this Perspex just to put things away effectively. So anything that's important, like the onion seeds, of course, and my thermometer, I'm going to put down onto the bed and then cover the bed. And the same goes for various bits and bobs that I've got down here just cover them up i will put these couple of plants outside because that's a simple thing to do and then i'll probably put these covers on top of the soil so i'm just trying not to allow any of the spray to go on the soil or anything that's important in the polytunnel i can just flip these over so that they're upside down so i'll do all that and then i should be good to go Right, that's me pretty much covered up. I've got some water here, but I'm just de-chilling for cleaning out propagators. So I will just cover that up. And then I think, there we go. I think we're in a good place. Okay, spray time. Many people said I should have been wearing a mask when I did the removal of the bedding. And they're right, of course, because that dust can't have done me any good. So don't do as I do. Anyway, here's my mask. And I'm gonna oh, make sure that during this spraying, I protect myself as much as I can. Although there's no indication on this that it is harmful. It probably is the best thing to do. Right. Here we go. So that's a bit strong. Right, I've got the spray nozzle sorted now. 
at about the right spread and I'm just going to work my way around and just try and be really methodical about the areas so that I do a patch at a time and that'll make sure that nothing's missed and then get right down and into these crevices because it does ripple at the edge of a polytunnel and if you're not careful you miss all that so that's gone in there I'm going to do the bars, although we don't really need it, I don't think. And that's pretty straightforward. It's just a case of being methodical about the spraying process. There we go. Hopefully the green that's on the inside, and there's plenty of it, will diminish in the same way as the outside has. Right, I'm going round. Well, that's that pretty much done. So I'm just going to give this a bit more of a spray because this end seems to be one of the worst areas and I'll use up the rest of this Algon by just spraying it. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by Algon. If you want to sponsor me Algon, feel free, go ahead. What do you think? I don't think that'll work. In a few days time I'll bring you back and show you the bottom of this door which is really still quite green at the moment and we'll see whether a second dose on those difficult areas works. Right, I think that's me done for today. Hope you've enjoyed the video and if you did why not like and subscribe and if you hit the bell then you'll get my notifications for my uploads every Wednesday and every Sunday at 8pm. Good times.